Hey, I'm Lindsay Mills with Telluride TV, and I'm sitting with two filmmakers that are working on a new project called Havana Libre. Tell us a bit about yourselves. Where'd you guys get started? Who are you? Ah, uh, my name's Corey McLean, uh, and I am the director on this film. Uh, I'm Seth, and I'm the DP and leading editor at the moment. Amazing. So you're both from Maine, grew up together? Yes. yes. Awesome. Yes. Sweet. Very, very young age. Since we were babies. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. And actually, our other partner that we work with, same thing. Uh, we go back a long way. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That brings a nice connection to the landscape of film, I presume. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so moving from Maine to California now, correct? Yeah. You're in Venice um, and working on a really interesting project with the surf scene in right. Cuba. Tell us a bit yeah. about what you've done so far and why Cuba. Okay. Um, well, we've shot the majority of our feature film there um, over the course of the last two, two and a half years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, Cuba was always somewhere that really intrigued us. It was always this like mysterious kind of off limits place and so for us that was really attractive. And as soon as we saw things were beginning to open up, that was like our cue. So as soon as, as, soon as we saw the first news like scrolling along this, we were, I was actually in an airport and I saw it scrolling along the bottom of TV and I called Seth and I was like, Seth, we're going to Cuba as soon as we can. And we kind of caught word that there was a surf scene, but we didn't know anything about it. And the Caribbean is known as being kind of hit or miss for surf. But that was really kind of like the icing on the cake as far as we're like, okay, we're going to go to Cuba. We're going to explore. We're going to be there for this really important historical moment. And we might get some surf. Mm -hmm. And as we spent more time there, as our trip evolved as the country started to change as we got to know our characters we realized that surfing actually is a really interesting story there um, it's been kind of quasi illegal for a long time there's there's kind of this weird gray zone there mm -hmm. and it's been a sport that's really been up against a lot of obstacles to exist so the fact that they've managed to create this really dedicated community there um, yeah, we ended up diving more into like the personal aspects of that whole story rather than just surfing and waves and yeah. it's, it's a much more personal story. Existing in an underground community that, yeah, you know, and surf itself kind of started in that way in the States, it seems. Yeah. So it's, it's oddly relevant to Americans while also being very strange in this modern era. Um, yeah. So tell us a bit about how you found the story when you got to Cuba. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, Corey stumbled upon into via, um, I think a few sources, friends of friends, mm -hmm. eventually it leads you down the rabbit hole. Um, and when he first called me, he was like, dude, they make refrigerator doors into surfboards and they like find trash and it's crazy. They're so, it's just the coolest thing. We gotta, this is what it sounds like. We gotta go make a film. So we're like, okay, this probably will be like a short film. Mm -hmm. Perfect, that sounds awesome. Um, and then as things happened and started changing, we became good friends with two, um, a guy named Frank and this girl named Yaya, and they both are sort of representative of different aspects of the surf culture. Mm -hmm. um, and we just were like, well, these are the people we like the most. We, we should be hanging out with them more. And as we did that, things started changing. The political landscape actually started changing, but Frank had a baby. Suddenly he becomes a father. And now his story is more than just He's not, he's the only surfboard maker in Cuba, but now he's also a, a diehard surfer that's suddenly realizing, wait, I've got a child now. I'm not, I can't just pursue waves. That's not all I have to do. And wait, I want my daughter to have a future surfing too. Hold on. Like, and then, so, you know, his wheels start turning. And then mm -hmm. as we start watching this and seeing everything unfold, then, you know, as I guess you're supposed to do, I was taught this in film school. I did go to that. They're like, you just keep rolling. You follow the story and you let it lead you. And it was like, okay. Well, that's pretty much all we can do. So we kind of just kept going and, and it became what it is. Yeah. Mm. So in perpetuating the sport in Cuba, what are some of the most difficult things that they have to overcome in order to, you know, instill this in their children and make yeah. sure that it becomes legal? So initially there was this big issue in Cuba at the end of the Cold War where Cuba was pretty much supported entirely by the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union fell, they had... Cuba had nothing. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Cubans were essentially granted citizenship if they were able to set foot on American soil. So Cubans were fleeing, uh, fleeing by any watercraft they could make, get their hands on, like 
car tires, refrigerator doors, <laughs> um, cobbled together rafts. There was even a guy who turned his like 1950s Buick into a boat and <laughs> managed to make it to, to America. But the Cuban government saw these people leaving in mass by the thousands and essentially turned the coastline into this really controversial place. Mm -hmm. So this is like the early, early 90s. And at the same time, the very first surfers were just starting to hit the water. And so for them, you know, they're making these boards which are precious. The, to get anything in Cuba is really, really challenging. And so they're just trying to ride waves. Mm -hmm. But the Coast Guard's coming in detaining them, stealing their boards, locking them up, charging them uh, fines, which they have no money to pay, so they end up spending time in jail. Um, so that's like the birth of Cuban surfing, which was really in not a great time for Cuba. Yeah. Um, as such, it's been like, it's been a pretty controversial sport in the decades following. Um, anything where Cubans are getting together and forming any group is looked at as being pretty suspect mm -hmm. since that's kind of how the revolution in Cuba started in the first place. So really there, there are a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of challenges in that regard. Um, one of the big challenges is, is just information. Okay. So most Cubans don't even know that there are waves in their own country to support surfing. Wow. Uh, you go ask anyone on the street, they'll tell you, no. The surfers go out to the water. People are trying to stop them, asking if they're crazy. Like, mm -hmm. oh, don't, don't go in there. Don't, don't try and kill yourself. Like, it's okay. <laughs> They'll ride on the bus on the bus with their boards. People ask them why they're bringing an ironing board on the bus. It's like, so it's it's kind of beautiful in a mm -hmm. sense. But for them, it's difficult to progress the sport when nobody knows about it and there's no support. Yeah, um, no infrastructure for it either. No infrastructure. So one of the things in our film was trying to help them prove. That there is a legitimate case for surfing to be made a sport there, um, which was finding good waves in Cuba mm -hmm. that are actually not just like these choppy storm waves, but a place where there's actually the ability to support a, a surfing, uh, a more professional surfing culture. And it exists in it multiple does. places around Cuba. It does. Mm -hmm. um, so in finding these waves, what what was most interesting about navigating Cuba? Um, the, by far the most interesting thing that we just, we sort of like realized as outsiders and we started circumnavigating the country was how cut off every, everyone else is even farther. It mm -hmm. feels like, like Havana and everyone's still cut off. Like the internet's a really new thing still, relatively. Um, but farther out, there's none of that at all. So when you show up, especially on one beach, we remember very specifically we're out there was a sunken battleship we saw and there were some waves breaking around it and we were like, well, that'll be a great spot to do some shooting. And Frank's like, I want to go surf. That's right. Okay, let's do it. He gets in the water and these kids are watching him. And they're like, yeah, what are you, man? Are you European? Like, where you come from? What is this? And he's like, no, I'm from Cuba and this is a surfboard. And they're like, we've never seen this. So it then turns into this lesson where he's basically trying to t teach them and they're like bantering back and forth about like, no, oh, I'm going to drown, man. This isn't just like swimming. Like, this is harder. Like, <laughs> give me a break, dude. And they're like, yeah, let me try. And, and it was, uh, you know, like just watching that sort of organically form out. But it basically just re made us realize like the planting the seats around the island that surfing is not normal. It's fun. It's cool. It's a, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. That is basically what stage that they're all at right now. Um, and for us, like we, you know, in the film, we'll show where one of these, some of these really cool spots are. Mm -hmm. And normally that's pretty anti-surf culture. You don't blow up each other's anti spots. Anti-most sports, don't yeah, worry. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we had yeah, a big, aware of that. Yeah, yeah, we had a big discussion with them. We're like, okay guys, you do know, like this is going to bring people. And they're like, that's what we need. That is the only thing that really will help us surf more is by having outsiders come in and bring, bring their supplies. A, so folks see what this stuff is mm -hmm. and know that it's not contraband, that there was like a, the CIA was accused of smuggling satellite dishes in via uh, surfboards yes. at one point in time. <laughs> um, and like, this isn't any of that. Um, but more or less, the the more outsiders, or the more Cubans see outsiders coming in and surfing, the more they recognize that it was a sport and that this is a global thing. And therefore, if like their children are doing it, oh, that it's okay, that mm -hmm. it's just a sport and it's an activity and it's a fun thing. Um, so yeah, like just sort of seeing how each part of the island would sort of react to us when we sh or would react to 
mostly Frank and Yaya, the Cubans who would show up and start surfing, because they're like, oh yeah, white people, we see you once in a while, we know you're tourists, and we'll just sort of let you do whatever. But when actual Cubans were surfing, and they're like, suddenly like, okay, hold on, why can't I, can I do this too? Like, mm-hmm. I'm allowed to do this? Oh, this is cool. Um, and that began sort of changing, I think, the at least around the landscape, because now, like, when we found this great wave down on the south coast, now, whenever the surfers can cobble together enough money to sort of get a trip down there, they go. Mm-hmm. And that's become their, like, their escape. So on the island before, they were trapped within Havana. They didn't know that there were any waves outside of their little hometown, so they're surfing the same breaks day after day after day. And if the, it's basically if there are waves or there are no waves, but now there's a spot that they can go to. There's a spot on the other end of the island that has waves that are consistent, that are great. Yeah. And that suddenly beca- became... Like, ugh, sorry. Um, and that suddenly became, uh, like an escape yeah. or like it's some freedom they don't have to just be stuck in one place they're able to go and sort of pursue their dream which is to just chase waves you know with with the goal of your project being to bring culture and information and education to the area and especially with the impending 2020 mm-hmm. olympic mm. opportunity um what what can people do to get involved um, um yeah i think knowledge is is power mm-hmm. for sure for them it's they just want people to know that they exist, mm-hmm. that they have a culture there, that they're passionate, that they're talented. They they want to be a part of the rest of the sporting world. Yeah. And you know, on uh, the skill level, on the skill front, they're you know they're not at that global level yet, um, but they aspire to be. Yeah. And to get there, it it involves pushing their cause. Mm-hmm. So knowing knowing that there's surfing in Cuba, knowing that there are people there who want to be better, and yeah, I think that'll help them legitimize their sport in their country. Great. Yeah. So you guys have a short film showing tomorrow at the yeah. Bob um, in the afternoon. Tell us a little bit about that and cool. how that connects. Um, all right. So in Cuba, there are roughly 100 surfers, mm-hmm. and we immediately were like, most of them surfing on plywood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and. The arc, the the film that we've made for the mountain film, is a character study on one of these surfers. He is one of the leaders in the surf community. He's definitely one of the better surfers, but he's more importantly the leader of the skate community, mm-hmm. and he's a really good skater. Um, and the skate community has faced the exact same hurdles that the surf community has. It's looked upon as this sort of fringe, weird, destructive outside culture. Um, but these guys is like as skaters here do too. They're just progressing and they're loving it and they connect over this bond of the board, right? Um, So for us, we thought he's not gonna be able to have this great voice in our film. There's just too much other stuff going on. And and the hard thing for us to learn as filmmakers is like cutting down the branches, (laughs) making it very more streamlined and simple. So the story really shines through. And we found characters being sort of left off and that was really sad because the dude is super cool. So we made a little character study sort of about him and he's the most eloquent about skateboarding and his, and his like vision of what the skateboarding community is about. We thought that was a really great short sort of moment in time. So we basically made this film kind of for him. Thank you yeah. both so much for joining us in the studio today. Yeah. Check out yeah. their short film tomorrow and be sure to follow Havana Libre throughout the completion. Yeah. 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 Um, no, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for listening you. to us ramble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Cool. Thank you. All right.